Hello, this is Danpro. Welcome to my Rigify tutorial series. We're in part 7G, and this should be actually the last tutorial in the stage 1 that I've been uh, kind of preaching for the last uh, few parts here. So, uh, I only really need to show one more operation, but uh, as a bonus, I'm going to kind of give you a glimpse into stage 2 and how we can really uh, uh, save some time by uh, rigging some clothing. So, that will be later. But first off, since we're talking about rigging clothing, what I want to talk about is how to transfer weights from one mesh to another to save a bunch of time. So you can see uh, in this example, when I move the hips around here, the the underlying or the our um, underwear mesh, which is a separate mesh than our body mesh, is just not uh, deforming uh, the same. So I'm going to show you how we can actually transfer weights from one mesh to another to um, save a lot of time and also get those meshes um, deforming a lot closer together. So I've actually spent a lot of time um, weight painting this body mesh here and uh, in earlier tutorials I basically just selected um, our underwear mesh and weight painted it with uh, automatic weights. So uh, the weight paint is just not lining up here and that's why we're getting all this poke through and weirdness. So the operation to transfer weights from one mesh to another is actually pretty simple. Let me just select our um, underwear mesh here and I'm going to go to my vertex group panel under the vertex data tab and I'm just going to uh, quickly delete all of these. Alright, so that basically I just deleted the automatic weighting that I set up earlier. So uh, what I want to do is select my body mesh, that is the mesh I am transferring from, and then I'm going to hold shift and select my underwear mesh, that is the mesh I'm going to transfer to. Next, I'm just going to go to weight paint mode. And then we can come uh, in our tools panel here. We can find our weight tools and go to transfer weights. So we're just going to click that. Um, you can see a bunch of things pop up over here. First thing I want to do is just click freeze operator. And that's basically when I change things around here, it's going to keep Blender from trying to keep updating that in real time. Sometimes that can really slow your machine down here. So I'm going to freeze this operation here really quick. I'm going to set it up data type to vertex groups and there's a lot of different data types that you can actually transfer um, around. I want to just use our data groups to start with. Next um, I'm going to make sure that our create data is checked that will it will create our vertex groups on our underwear mesh for us. Uh, the next thing we need to pick is how we want to um, transfer those weights. So I found that nearest face interpolated and nearest edge interpolated work very well. I'm going to uh, just pick nearest face interpolated for now. Um, next I'm going to leave object transform checked and the important one here is source layer to destination layer. So on our source layer what we want to pick is by name and our destination layer we can just leave at all layers. So. Now, there's a number of this deformed pose bones and selected pose bones. Um, I haven't had any uh, real luck on getting that to work, and I'm not sure why that is. I'm really going to have to uh, figure out the new um, weight transfer tools here, but uh, I can tell you from experience that this will do what we need to do here, and we're going to leave our mix mode at replace. You can uh, change this to multiply, subtract, add and uh, above a threshold or below a threshold and this mix factor will be um, where you set your threshold at. So for now we'll just leave mix factor 1, replace and now we can unfreeze our operator and that will transfer our weights over to our um, underwear mesh. If I just select a, um, our hip bone here you can see the weights or a leg bone here you can see the weights on our underwear mesh. Now let's take a look at uh, how that's deforming and you can see that it's much better than it was although it is still not 100 percent perfect now um, instead of going in here and uh, uh, touching up this weight paint I want to explain a little bit of why um, this weight transfer didn't seem to be perfect and the reason for that is basically this mesh has different topology than this underwear mesh our uh, body mesh has different topology uh, let me just go to our um, display here. I'm going to select the body mesh. Let's turn on wire and draw all edges and next I'm going to uh, select our underwear mesh here and I can show you the difference in topology. Let's go back to object mode and under display with that selected 
I'm just going to quick draw all edges and also wire. So you can see the black lines are the body mesh and they are not lining up very well with our um, the wires of this underwear mesh so and that's really kind of the difficulty when you are um, uh, rigging clothing if your underlying if your meshes don't have the same topology it's very hard well not very hard but it, it's a lot harder to uh, get your weight painting to um, basically this mesh and this mesh to uh, deform uh, the same so it's not impossible and I want to show instead of uh, going in here and weight painting this mesh to uh, deform nicely I want to show you a different method that I use um, where I derive um, my clothing directly from a body mesh here so let me just go back get some go back to solid mode here all right so and also I'm just going to turn off this wire frame display it's a little distracting I'm going to show you how to create um, let me just turn off our this and turn on this alright so I actually created um, this clothing directly from my body mesh and you can see that it deforms way nicer than um, that uh, underwear mesh we had with a uh, different topology here so I'm sure you can agree that that uh, looks a lot nicer so I'm going to show you how to do this and it's only going to take a few seconds and it's uh, one of the reasons why I usually like to start my models um, as a nude model and then I drive all my clothing from that that way uh, all my weight painting and all that stuff is already transferred across uh, automatically so let me just turn off those clothing here and let's get in here to this body mesh whoops I want to move it I'm going to select it I'm going to edit mode let me just deselect everything let me see what I want to make here make a let me just make a pair of uh, pants uh, short shorts here let me just select this one these two loops here I'm gonna do H to hide them and let me select this one up here and hide that as well I think if I just select these vertices here in the front and hide them that's a good base to start with here so I'm going to uh, the reason I hid those is so I can select one vertex on there and basically I just made an island I'm going to do control L and I'm going to select this um, hip island uh, here and make a duplicate of it with shift D so I've made that duplicate and now I want to do P to separate that duplication by selection and now it kind of disappears here I'm going to actually need to go to uh, back to object mode and you can't really see that mesh but it's it's in here if I grab it here that's where that duplicate was made let me actually move this to a fresh layer here so we can just concentrate on that all right so now that I've got this duplicated mesh here we, um, let me just get rid of that mask modifier I'll talk talk about that a little bit later basically that duplication uh, it's going to duplicate all of our uh, parenting um, it's parented to the rig it's going to duplicate all of our modifiers across and um, this is actually one thing that's a little bit that we need to clean up is going to uh, keep all of that uh, weight painting and all of these vertex weights now this pair of pants we don't need th um, thumb weights and things like that so we can clean this stuff up later obviously we our tongue doesn't need to uh, influence that at all but uh, uh, this is how I derive uh, clothing directly from it. Let me just get in here and uh, I'm not going to spend the time in here to delete all the extra groups but uh, I just want to go to materials panel I'm just going to use this go to edit mode here select all the vertices just assign this so we've got a little bit different uh, colored uh, a different color for our underwear here alright so let's make a pair of um, underwear from this. I'm going to do control R and add another whoop here. Let me actually get back on to get my body mesh here selected so I can kind of determine what I'm doing here a little bit better. I'm just going to do this really quick GG to get an edge slide. Let me bring this down to be more of a pair of underwear. You probably want to pull this one up and out, just kind of straighten that up a little bit. And 
again I'm just typing GG to do an edge slide and I'm just gonna do this really quick so uh, don't expect miracles here for, uh, <laughs> when I'm making this you just kinda slide these down straighten that out just a little bit better pair of pants here Maybe bring that up a little bit looks like Hmm. Fix that a little bit. So, poking out. All right. So now I've got that mesh. Let's go to our object or our modifiers tab. Let's add some thickness to that by adding a solidify modifier. And that solidify modifier. Let me kick it above the subsurf, and I think the thickness is going in. So let's go to a negative value to push it out. And eh, about right there. All right. So in relatively just a few minutes here, I now have a pair of pants that derived directly from this body mesh here that that automatically um, uh, because the topology is almost identical, and the weight paint was transferred because I duplicated it from that. Um, it's going to deform much nicer right off the bat. Now, th it's not finished. I should probably still go in here and do a little bit of cleanup uh, where I drug all this stuff down a little bit. But uh, I think you'll agree that uh, this result is a lot better than having uh, a completely different um, topology to our mesh underneath. So, a few more things here I want to talk about deriving uh, and creating uh, clothing. Um, directly from our body mesh here. Now, let me see if I can get this to find a poke through here. All right, so when I lift that leg up, you'll notice that the skin is kind of poking through. Um, the skin of the body mesh is poking through um, this pair of pants here a little bit. Now, I'm going to show you how to fix that. And the way we're going to do that is with, um, instead of doing, going in there and trying to white paint it to go away, to change the topology over here, well, what we're going to do is use a mask modifier. So let me go to just our body mesh here. I'm going to show you what our mask modifier does. I'm just I already have one on here, and I created a vertex group with for masking our clothes. Let me just turn that on, and you can see what that mask modifier does. It's basically just hiding all of these vertices that will not be seen because they're going to be covered by clothes. And now when I turn that on, there's going to be no poke through. So very quickly we can uh, um, that mask modifier is actually pretty important um, it's gonna do a number of things first it's just gonna help blender uh, blender will actually try to render that skin underneath and uh, just for efficiency and when we're rendering uh, by hiding it with that mask modifier since we're never gonna see that skin because it's covered by this clothing um, we can just hide it uh, the next thing it's gonna do is because those vertices are hidden they're basically uh, when the mask modifier gets um, done um, hiding those vertices then it kicks it out to the armature modifier so the armature modifier has actually got a lot less heavy lifting the armature modifier only needs to move these vertices that are not masked so and so on for the other modifiers our subserve does not have to um, subdivide any of these vertices um, that are being masked with this mask modifier so uh, I guess long story short Put your mask modifier above your armature modifier just for efficiency in both animating and also in rendering. So you also notice when you make, um, there's a toggle here. Um, if I invert that, I made it this. Let um, me go to edit mode here. Select and hide everything and go to our object data. Let me go down to our mask modifier and select it. So I created a new vertex group called it Mask Clothes. Let me just select all these vertices, and I just added um, the vertices that I wanted to be masked. Now, if we look at our modifier, um, this actually inverts that um, that selection or that vertex group. So that's what's making um, making this switch. So if if your vertex group is inverted, just click this toggle right here, and then we have very quickly made rigged clothing 
that deforms uh, relatively well right off the bat. And you'll notice there's a few things that I haven't uh, touched up yet here you, around the collar. This is pulling a little bit too much. So, like normal, we do have to do a little bit of cleanup, but I think you will agree that this is far nicer to do it this way than um, to create clothing and then try to weight paint it by hand or even after we've transferred weights from an uh, underlying mesh. Uh, this is the way to go here. So, now this is a very simple example, and I just use uh, a solidify modifier. But you could, of course, also go in here and uh, add um, uh, a multi-res modifier, make some wrinkles and uh, maybe some seams for a pair of jeans and pockets and things like that, and then uh, use that, uh, bake that uh, to a texture, and um, use it as a texture instead of. Uh, um, instead of going in and actually adding pockets, you could uh, bake that as a texture instead and fake all that uh, added geometry and in, uh, in high frequency detail. So I hope these tips help. Until next time, good luck.